What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMCG. Down there, we like magic, and I'm hanging out with you on the final day of Guilds of Ravnica spoilers. Today was the common dump. You know, they do this at the end of every preview season. We saw like 60 uh, cards today, which sounds like a lot to parse through, but as usual, most of it is like inconsequential-ish or limited playable only stuff. So what I've done is I've spent my day sifting through everything and coming up with the cards that I really think are worth talking about. That said, there are still like 20 cards I want to go over here, so it's a lot to talk about. Let's get right to it. But, you know, first, a gentle reminder to help out my YouTube metrics if you enjoy the content by taking a little bit of time to like the video and sub to the channel too if you haven't done it yet, because we've still got the pre release guide in a couple of days. That's always a huge undertaking, but it's going to be a really long and comprehensive guide, so you probably want that, plus the top 10 sleepers, top 25 cards, and then deck tech season, which is when the good videos really start. So if you haven't done it yet, take a moment to subscribe. But let's go ahead and get to these cards. All right, well, first let's look at a card that was spoiled last night. This is Chamber Sentry, and it might be one of the better cards of the day just because it's like the only rare that we'll look at, but this is X for an artifact creature. It's Construct. It's 0-0, zero, zero, but it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. It has Sunburst. It's not written on the card, but that's Sunburst. Um, you can also pay X and tap it and remove X plus one plus one counters from it to deal X damage to any target. This seems familiar. Or you can pay one, a blue, a black, a red, and a green, all five colors of mana, to return it from your graveyard to your hand. The Fixta Ballista is what this looks like, you know. It's not at all Walking Ballista, you know, obviously you have to tap it to use its ability, um, which makes a huge, enormous difference. It can't attack the same turn to use its ability. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff on this that like, consciously makes it worse than Ballista. But it looks like they're trying to make something at least reminiscent, uh, reminiscent, <laughs> reminiscent, that's the word I'm looking for, of, of Walking Ballista. Um, while also making a fixed version of it. And it looks like they've hit it here, but the card does not look bad by any stretch of the imagination, you know. If it gets a few plus one, plus one counters on it, let's say it has three plus one, plus one counters, um, then it can sometimes kill, like, two creatures at least before it ends up dying. I and mean, if it does die, if you're able to produce all the mana, uh, then you can bring it back to your hand and do some really crazy stuff, you know. You can play it as a 5-5, five, five, end up just doming the opponent for five, so that's kind of cool, you know. Late in the game, this actually wouldn't be too bad for a five-color deck, and it gives you a reason to play Gates, if anything else. So, I actually think the creature has some legs. Uh, obviously, it has at least two, but I think the creature has some standard playability, but obviously it's not going to see as much play as Walking Ballista, which is literally in every deck ever and sees modern legacy play. That's not what we're looking at here. Um, but I do think, maybe more than some other people even, that this has some slight ray of hope in standard. Now, as far as the white cards from the dump, most of them are limited playable, but there's not a whole lot of standouts here, but I do want to talk about Demotion and a couple of other cards for a second, but Demotion first. This is just one white mana for an aura. Enchanted creature can't block and its activated abilities can't be activated. Well, that would have been sweet to have against the Scarab God in the previous standard for, like, aggressive decks, you know. This would have been great just blow right past the Scarab God and they can't get, like, mid-game value out of it by reanimating creatures, especially your own creatures, which is always kind of a brick wall to aggro decks. This would have been nice. Even against, like, Hazaret and Ronas and stuff, this would have been at least okay to stop them from using their, you know, late-game abilities that bust the game open. So, I kind of like this, even though most of the good targets are gone, but this is still decent, in a way, for white aggro decks that just want to blow through blockers and stuff. And it might even be um, somewhat decent against relevant activated abilities, but mostly, if it's worth the slots in an aggro deck, which I really doubt it is, it's really, really low cost, though, um, and it just allows you to get through blockers and not care, so. It's a form of removal, but really only in an aggro deck. So if any deck plays it, it's going to be those. But again, I really doubt it. That said, though, I definitely think it's worth a second look. I also think Sworn Companions is kind of worth pointing out. You know, it's just three mana, two and a white for sorcery. You get two 1-1 white soldiers with lifelink. Now, it's not really that much to uh, write home about. Obviously, I think a lot of us were at least subconsciously hoping for a two-mana effect like this, you know, like gather the townsfolk or raise the alarm or something, but I still think that even at three-mana, this is going to be a key card for Selesnya strategies in Limited, whether draft or sealed, one way or the other. This is still at the common level, and it's going to be a great way to build your board in Selesnya decks if you're trying to convoke or get, you know, other benefits off of having a big board. This is a pivotal card, a critical card, a good way of doing it, and again, you'll see a few copies of it in a draft. So I like this. Again, I think it's a great filler card for these decks and it's going to be a good role player. 
Blue also had a couple of interesting cards today, but again, not a whole lot that I absolutely love. But that said, Selective Snare is at least okay looking. I'm not sure how amazing this is going to be in the limited environment. Although there are some humans, some soldiers, some zombies, there are a few creature types in this set that um, are shared between a lot of creatures. It's not entirely disparate. So I would say in limited, this does have a fair amount of playability, but even in standard, I don't expect to see this, but there are some tricky things you can do with it, you know. In a blue deck, it's obviously a removal tool against tribal decks that we may see. You know, obviously Ixalan tribes might get their day. Um, and then knights are still a deck, you know, elves are kind of sort of a deck, goblins are a deck. Um, wizards are a deck, you know, there's, there's a lot of different uh, creature type decks going on or uh, going around out there. So I could see Snare being at least an okay way to pseudo two or three for one your opponent for a relatively low cost. And I like that about it, but I also like the ability to return, you know, creatures you control to your own hand and repeat into the battlefield triggers and stuff like that. Or any other value that you're getting off of playing creatures of a certain creature type. So I think Selective Snare has a fair amount of play on it, and it doesn't look like a great card, but I could see it being in, you know, being playable in certain situations. I also want to point out Vidalkin Mesmerist, um, if only for the flavor text, which is really awesome. The flavor text is literally a Jedi mind trick. That's, it's just, they've written a Jedi mind trick. Um, <laughs> aside from that, I actually think the card is kind of playable in some ways. Um, Wizards decks are really looking hard for a really playable two drop, and I'm not sure that this is it, but it could replace something like Spellweaver Eternal in the two drop slot in these blue red wizards decks that sort of exist you know a two minute two one is not the worst rate in the world the creature type is right and it does have at least a decent ability when it does attack you know being able to sort of cut a blocker out or at least cut a blocker's ability to kill one of your creatures completely out is actually somewhat desirable so i wouldn't sleep on the um the attacks trigger i actually think it's somewhat decent especially in a deck that's mostly attacking with small creatures in the first place. So I at least think it'll see some testing in the two drop slot for blue red wizards, but I'm not sure it ultimately makes the cut. But now on to black, which I think is the winner of the day. I think there are more interesting black cards than any other color um, in the common dump by a good bit. So let's look at Barrier of Bones first to start things off. This is a black mana for a 0-3 skeleton wall with Defender, and when it enters the battlefield, Surveil 1. Now, I said the other day, actually, that I wanted a creature uh, for one mana that surveils when it enters the battlefield. Boom, here it is. It springs into existence the day after I talk about it. Um, so I do think that this is somewhat playable. It blocks fairly well in the early game, um, and it always surveils one for you. You know, it's no Stitcher Supplier, but it's at least decent if you don't get Supplier on turn one. It shares a color with Supplier, so it doesn't stress the mana base too much. You're already looking for black mana on turn one for Supplier. So that makes Barrier Bones a little bit better um, as far as deck building goes. So I do like the card, and I think it'll at least definitely see testing, but we'll see how many copies, if any, are the correct number. But something tells me that, that two or three may actually be correct. This is a decent card. Also check out Burglar Rat here. This is two mana, one and a black for a 1-1 one, one rat, and when it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. Each opponent discards a card. Pretty sweet. This is Ravenous Rats, you know, um, which is always good in the limited environment. I'm not sure how much um, it's going to be, how good it's going to be this time around, because you may be doing people a favor by letting them dump a creature into their graveyard, you know, um, or a jumpstart spell <laughs> into their graveyard. So again, I'm not sure this is as good as it usually is, but it's at least worth pointing out, worth pointing out. Because um, Ravenous Rats is a fine card. It's much better than people give it credit for. Let's check out Mephitic Vapors here, too. This is three mana, two, and a black for a sorcery. All creatures get minus one, minus one till end of turn. And your Surveil, too. Well, this might actually be very, very good. Out of the sideboard at your sealed event. Um, remember, any card you don't play in your um, main deck is in your sideboard in sealed. So games two or three, you could pop this right in. Um, if you come up against, you know, tokens-based decks, there are an awful lot of cards in this format, especially in green and white, obviously, that make 1-1 one, one guys, usually with lifelink, but even Legion Warboss makes 1-1 one, one tokens and a couple of other cards. So, you know, we've already covered a card today that makes 1-1 one, one tokens, so Mythic Vapors may actually be a very important sideboard piece in both draft and sealed against those decks. 
I also want to point out that we got Dead Weight back. This is a reprint, but for all intents and purposes, this might be seriously the most standard playable card of the entire common dump. You know, Dead Weight is really good removal. It's just one black mana, and it takes care of creatures all the way up to three on the curve some of the time. You know, this will take out a Tajik for you, so that's worth pointing out, and a bunch of other creatures all the way up to at least three mana on the curve. So Dead Weight was, was playable the other times it was printed. I don't see why it wouldn't be playable now. It's a fine card. But probably the card that I'm most curious about in black from the dump today is Pilfering Imp. This is one black mana for a 1-1 imp with flying, and you can pay a 1 and a black and tap it, and sacrifice it. To have target opponent reveal their hand, you choose a non laid card from it, and they discard the card, but you can only do this anytime you can cast the sorcery. This is actually fairly decent. I mean, you have to pump three total mana into it to actually use its ability, but I actually don't think it's too bad. I mean, a 1-mana one 1-1 one flyer is at least okay in my book. Um, it's a an easy creature to put into your graveyard for undergrowth if you're trying to do that, you know. Um, the sacrifice might actually mean something depending on what else you've got on board. You know, you got a Midnight Reaper on board, you draw a card off of this too, so that seems okay. Um, I just think that it's a relatively low investment for a body that can also do something really good against control decks that they can't usually counter, you know, um, or really do much about. If you get this down on the first turn, they feel like they probably have to burn a removal spell on it, or else you'll probably cash it in for a really good card out of their hand a little bit later on in the game, not that much later on in the game, depending on what else you've got going on. So, and if nothing else, it's a flying body for a really, really low cost that you might want an aggro deck. You know, this can die in combat, chump block a big guy, and again, contribute to your undergrowth cost. So there is a lot that I like about Imp. I'm not sure that it really has the chops for standard play, but that might be a misevaluation. This might be a power uncommon, for all I know, because there's an awful lot of really, really cool stuff about it. And just having this effect on board is actually a kind of a big threat of activation. So I like a lot about this card. Now, Red really got the short end of the stick as far as I'm concerned today. There's not really much I want to talk about. I am intrigued by Gravitic Punch, though. This is 4 mana, 3, and a red for sorcery. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target player, and you can jumpstart it. And the art is also super dope on this card. I really like all the sort of action that's going on on this card um, and the way it's depicted. But in any case... Aside from that, let's talk about the function of the card. It's actually kind of neat. Um, it's kind of terrible to have in your hand if you don't have a decent creature on board, and it's not going to actually affect the board in any real way. But that said, there's some actual combo potential with this, you know. Um, what is it, Rhizome Troll? <laughs> you can do this with, just fill your graveyard with dudes, play your Rhizome Troll, and you don't even have to get through for combat damage. Just Gravitic Punch for like 40. And by the way, you can mill the Gravitic Punch into your graveyard and still not care because you just jump started out of your yard. That seems kind of cool. You can do the same thing with Golgari Raiders, by the way, as you could with uh, Rhizome Troll. So I think there's a really stupid, maybe possibly budget combo deck. Although the mana base doesn't necessarily look budget. Um, but there's probably something really dumb you can do with this card. And again, I like the function in that you can mill it into your graveyard still cast it. So, in an undergrowth deck that it has access to red mana, this could actually be playable if your creatures get big enough. And we've got a couple of creatures that can. But I also want to look at Torch Courier right here. This is just one red mana for a 1-1 goblin with haste. That sounds familiar. And you can sacrifice it to have another target creature gain haste until end of turn. Now, I think this might possibly be more relevant than it looks at first glance. Yeah, it's just a Raging Goblin, which aren't great. We've probably got much better 1-1 goblins already. Skirk Prospector, Goblin Veneret, just in standard. Um, but, but, that said, in a, in a red mid-range deck, first of all, this can give, like, Demanding Dragon Haste, that could be relevant. It can give Rekindling Phoenix Haste, that could be somewhat relevant. It is able to be sacrificed, um, more or less, at will, which could also be relevant on your one drop. In an Undergrowth deck or any other deck that's trying to fill its graveyard with creatures, this could be very, re very relevant. Imagine if the Godfair's Gift deck had access to a piece like this. Actually, it did, Skirk Prospector. Um, and before that insolent neonate, but this, the cards like this have proven to be somewhat important in the past for sideways combo and synergy potential. So being able to sacrifice your one drop at will is actually kind of important, especially for free. That's pretty important, but in reanimator strategies, this could give huge creatures or creatures with crazy enter the battlefield triggers or whatever that you're reanimating haste for no cost on that turn. And that could also be similarly relevant, so this card actually has a fair amount of play on it, even if it's not, you know, apparent when you first read it. 
But let's go on to green here, which I also think is a winner from day. Not quite as much intriguing stuff or as push stuff as black, but still probably more cards than I want to talk about than almost any other color. So with that said, let's talk about Grappling Sundew, another card that doesn't look like much. You know, it's two mana, one in a green for a 0-4 plant with Defender in reach. You can pay four in a green to have it gain Indestructible until end of turn. Well, the only reason I bring this card up is because um, it's good for the Arcades deck, sort of, you know. 0-4 reach is at least okay in the early game. It becomes effectively a 4-4 once you get your Arcades down. And... If you have the mana to pump into it in the very late game, it can also be a 4-4 indestructible with reach, and that can be, you know, relevant in a number of different combat situations and board states. So, if you're playing the Arcades deck, this is a little bit of gas for that, but so is Portcullis Vine um, in green as well. This is a very interesting card for the Arcades deck. It's just one green mana for a 0-3 plant wall with Defender, and you can pay two and tap it and sack a creature with Defender to draw a card. Now, this might be playable enough if it was just Sacrifice Portcullis Vine, but being able to sack any creature with Defender, especially a Defender that's going to die in combat anyway, blocking a creature, is actually a pretty big game, and two mana is not too much to ask. It's a little bit of an investment, but drawing a card off a creature that's going to die in combat anyway is fairly decent. This gives every creature that you control the opportunity to be a sort of wall of, well not wall of roots, uh, wall of blossoms or Wall of Omens, you know, uh, when they leave the battlefield rather than when they enter. And that could be very, very good in an Arcades deck. So um, I really like just some of the pieces that deck got today because this is easily going to be a 4 of. If nothing else <laughs> that we saw all set, this is a 4 of 1 drop in the Arcades deck. I also want to review Pause for Reflection because it makes you do just that. You know, this is 3 mana, 2 and a green for an instant with Convoke. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Well, that's exactly what the Turbo Fog deck needed, a free fog. Although it's never going to cast it for free, that deck just doesn't really play creatures. Um, unless it wants to start getting crazy and play like Time Stream Navigator or something, which you never know. Um, but it's almost never going to convoke this. But it did need another fog effect to maybe stay relevant. Um, and it's probably going to play at least some number of this because it's a decent fog effect. And if it does ever want to employ creatures for any reason, this gives it a really good reason to do that. So hang on to your butts. It looks like Turbo Fog is still a deck, but I think there are plenty of good strategies in the format at this point to counter it. I don't think it's that much to worry about. But if you wanted your hands on Nexus of Fate, I think that this kind of sucks. Because um, it is definitely confirmation that that deck will, uh, will probably carry on. Because this is a very playable fog effect for them. And with that, I think I'm tapped out for this one, but I'll turn it over to you. It's your turn, you know. Let me know what I missed as far as the common dump, because I sometimes miss things. You know, I famously missed uh, Felidar Guardian in one of the last day dumps that they did, and that was a broken card that went on to have to be banned, you know. It was part of a really dumb infinite combo deck for a few months. Um, but I guess I don't feel too bad about it, because Wizards missed it too, but I'm cha. But, you know, there's probably something I missed that might enable some broken combo. So if I did... Make sure you let me know down there and the rest of the community for that matter. Also, make sure to check out DCG Player. First link in the description down there. Incidentally, they do sponsor my content, but they also are factually just the cheapest place you're going to be able to pre-order a box of guilds on the internet right now. They're still hovering at like 92 93 bucks, which is still well below what MSRP is going to be once the set actually releases. So if you want some value, pre-order some boxes, do it at DCG Player because they're the cheapest place you're going to be able to do it online. Click the link. And do all the other stuff, you know. Like I said earlier, subscribe because this is where the videos start getting good. Probably don't want to miss out on that content. And I don't want you to just leave because spoiler season ends. Come on, guys. This is where stuff starts getting good. So hang out with me some more. Make sure you click subscribe. And head over to the Patreon if you really like my content and you want to make the channel a little bit better. You know, a dollar at a time really helps more than you could possibly imagine. That's all I really ask for you. So I'll leave a link in the description. If you want to help out, hit the Patreon link. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Now I get to go into the lab for the pre-release video and then start really brewing in earnest. I've been doing a lot of brewing lately, like a lot of brewing. Pretty much any time I spend off camera and not editing video, I feel like I'm brewing these days. But coming up with a lot of strong stuff and deck tech season is going to be for real. So make sure you're locked in for all that stuff and I guess I'll catch you cats later. I'm Deb from The Place. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Spread love and be kind.